just about the birth of John the Baptist. And today, as I'm meditating on the birth of Jesus, foretold, it's an amazing scripture. It says, thou hast found favor with God. So Mary was a young girl, never knew any man, very obedient and uh, very godly. You may say, how I can say that? Because she was obedient to the call of God. When angel gave a difficult task, she obeyed and she said, let, let thy will be done. With that, we can understand that she is a obedient child. In the sixth month, I'm reading the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. The virgin espoused a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. The Lord selected this young girl, and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation it should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. My focus in this devotion is, thou hast found favor with God. And the Lord told me this morning, said, you know, he found me and he found you this morning saying that you are an important in the economy of God's kingdom and God's favor is on you. You know, when God's favor is on us, we don't need anybody's favor. The Lord fulfills his will in our lives. So this morning, the Lord tells all of us that Thou hast found favor with God. <laughs> Sometimes to get favor from people, we do so many things. But here, we don't need to do anything. God himself comes to us and say, you are highly esteemed and you found favor. And this morning, I wanted to encourage you, my friend. You are as significant and special in the sight of God because God found you and he comes to you this morning and say, you are highly favored. I don't know what kind of context you are in, but the Lord says, you are special to me. You are not only just favored, but you are highly favored. <laughs> it's an amazing uh, sentence. It is an encouraging word to you this morning. You are highly favored. You may think I'm nobody, but God thinks that you are somebody. That's why God wants you. Mary found favor with God for a significant purpose, a purpose to raise the Son of God. <laughs> the Lord found her to make her as a champion of the mothers and the Mary did a great ministry we may wonder what kind of ministry she never went and traveled and did miracles or led people to Christ or anything but she raised the son of God a mother and as I was meditating sitting at my table Mary one of the greatest mothers mother Mary mother, great mothers of great missionaries, as I am reading some mothers. Why Mary became great famous? Because she was the mother of the Lord. She raised the Son of God. And today as we look back to the history of missions, history of missions is the history of great mothers who raised their children in the fear and in the knowledge of the Word of God. They went around and contributed to the kingdom of God. I'm reminded of four great mothers in the history of the church. Many of us know the great Saint Augustine. He's also called as Augustine of Hippo in the history of Christianity. You know, the Augustine whose masterpiece is the city of God. Um, the book 
made a great contribution to the kingdom of God and Augustine's theology, you know, even we study and he's a great for history of the uh, forefathers of the Christian history. But nobody knows uh, his mother, Monica. Um, Augustine's mother, Monica, is known for um, her contribution to the kingdom of God by weeping for his son. Augustine got in, engaged in Gnostic philosophy. He didn't believe in God. Gnosticism, you know, encouraged knowledge and extra biblical knowledge. You know, they were after the knowledge. Gnostics are not really close to God. They're like a deist. They don't believe in. Augustine was hooked with that kind of Gnostic philosophy. He's far away from God, and he was you know, engaged in all sorts of wicked, sinful passions and the desires. The church says he was very much in prostitution. He was always going after the woman. The Augustine himself documents saying that you no, know, he was living such a rugged life, but he had an amazing transformation. It's all started with her mothers. <laughs> a mother who agonized for her son. This Monica, the mother, is known in the church history as the weeping mother. <laughs> her tears transform her son Augustine and the church history regards Augustine's contribution. Today, everybody has to read Augustine's theology and his contribution is marvelous. And I'm reminded of the second mother, uh, Katharina Luther. Every one of us fascinated with Martin Luther's contribution because of his reformed theology and he's you no know, father of reformation. But um, Monica, the, the Catherine Luther, she's, she was the industrious mother. Martin Luther's wife, Katharina, her contribution is marvelous in the church history. Now she was behind Martin Luther and uh, she was there with him in all of his struggles, Katharina. Though Mani Luther is often remembered for his role in kickstart the more Protestant Reformation, the role of Katharina Luther is no less important. Though she was a Catholic nun, she grew to be convinced of the truths of the Reformation and escaped her convert, along with other nuns, by hiding in barrels of fish. All of this arranged by Luther. And uh, she stood with Luther and she supported him. Without her support, Luther says he would not have succeeded in his, uh, uh, in that great reformation. So we all know about uh, a great, I think many of us don't know exactly, but the church history in China knows Loti Moon. Loti Moon contributed so much uh, to the female education in China, and she was the mother of modern missions in China. But nobody knows her mother, Anna Maria Moon. Anna Maria Moon had a great vision to raise her daughter in the fear and the knowledge of the word of God, and she is the believer of education. I'm reminded of uh, this statement one day. I was in my daughter's um, anniversary in the school, United International School at Bangalore. The guest speaker was a former Indian president, Abdul Kalam, a great man. Of course, uh, by faith, he is Muslim, but uh, he is neutral in his uh, theology. But I'm not talking about theology. I'm talking about the statement he made. By then, he was very old before, I think that two, three months before his death, he came to the school. His security guards brought him to the podium, a pulpit, and he was holding the pulpits tied. And he said the first statement, he said, education gives you wings to fly. Education gives you wings to fly. Yeah, it is true. This mother, uh, Anna Maria, understood education gives wings to fly for her daughter. And she dreamt that her daughter should get great education. In that ancient society, female education was not really appreciated. 
and uh, particularly in the Eastern context, females were confined to the home, cook food and support the husband and be at home. But this mother visualized, dreamt of her daughter to get her the highest education. As a result, you know, Lori would become one of the first two women in the number of languages, Latin, Greek, Hebrew, French, Italian, and Spanish. Chinese would, of course, come with her time in China as a missionary. She went to the West and she studied in the Western University at Virginia Female Seminary. Eventually, she was the first female graduated woman from China. Look at this mother's great dream. <laughs> the sociological differences, financial difficulties and what not, thousand and one, but this mother dreamt her daughter to get education. And as a result, this um, Loti uh, Moon contributed to the mission to China. The love of learning that her mother gave to her and which she was so crucial for her spiritual development, Loti Moon was an essential part of her evangelism in China. Moon would found a girls' boarding school and teach other children Bible stories and catechism as well as hymns. This mother method of evangelism through education formed the cornerstone of her work in northern China. She would eventually expand the single school into a multitude and educated boys and girls. The growth of missions in China and the creation of the international mission offering at Christmas came through the commitment of Moon's mother to provide her with an education and the ability to exercise her gifts through ministry. Sometimes we underestimate education. And we think secular education will spoil people, send them to Bible school. <laughs> you know, in India, it's very funny. If a family has two children, one, one child studies so well, the parents sell their lands and houses and they borrow money and send the child to become a doctor, an engineer, and make sure that the child gets the best education. If one another child is a rogue or a bastard, or whatever the nasty words are used, if they are roaming around the streets, they send him to the Bible school, thinking that Bible school will make them good. We cannot, we should not give the waste people to God's ministry. The Lord demands the best. You know, thinking Bible, you know, Bible schools are filled with all nasty people in India because I have been ministering in the dark person school several times. I sat hundreds and hundreds of interviews and I found all the waste people come to Bible school. I don't know why. You know, no, we should send our best children to the Bible schools. And we should send our children to the best education. Education has the power to liberate the clutches of the evil. Education is good. Annie Moon understood that value and she gave the best education to her daughter, Lori Moon, on her knees when there were moments. I'm reminded of the, you know, everybody knows Billy Graham. You know how Billy Graham became the world famous? It's all because of his mother, her mother. Um, Maro Graham, Maro Graham, you know, Maro Graham's fame comes from her son, the Billy Graham, but it is her influence on him that he say he says was essential to his coming to know Christ. Billy Graham himself documented in his autobiography saying that it's all my mother who knelt and prayed and prayed and prayed. Her mother's prayer made him as a champion of the world evangelization. Just as mother's daily perform work that goes unnoticed, these mothers are a reminder of the value that the small acts can have for the advance of the cause of Christ and the kingdom. Here we are meditating the mother, mother of Jesus, Mary. She, thou hast found favor with God. And today, I want to encourage you, mother. You may not be able to do a great ministry going around, but raising your children in the fear and the knowledge of the word of God is the greatest mission 
You know, I salute to the mothers who do that work. I'm grateful to my wife. She raised three children that are fear in the knowledge of the word of God. Today, we're sitting in a small island and relaxing when my daughter is in Texas, surrounded by the evil. And she's shining as a star because my wife spent enough time with the Lord and now still spending time with the Lord, confident that our prayer, our prayers, you know, securing her and protecting. It's God who raises children. You know, here, Mary, the mother of Jesus, found favor with God. And I want to encourage you, you are found favor with God. But it was mother's faith and devotion that shaped children more than anything. I can with the Graham. Now, Billy Graham himself documented in his autobiography, let me read it, of all the people I have ever known, my mother had the greatest influence on me. I am sure that one reason that the Lord has directed and safeguarded me as well as my wife Ruth and my children through the years was the prayers of my mother and father. Billy Graham says, it was the prayers of my mother and father. These prayers were a constant reminder to Graham of the family he had left and of his calling. Whenever he spoke of his time at college, he always spoke of her mother and his father, daily praying every morning for him and what that meant to his ministry. Maro Graham's faithfulness, Billy Graham's mother, Maro Graham's faithfulness in the small acts of prayer and family devotion was essential to the faith of her son and has led to many coming to faith. And today, Mothers, you may not be able to do a great ministry, but if you raise your children in the fear and the knowledge of the word of God, let me tell you, you found favor with God. <laughs> you can raise your children like morning stars, as morning stars. For many of these women that I quoted today, there is little information about them. They are outshined by their husbands, sons, and daughters but there is a quiet nobility in this truth. The truths of the gospel were not distrust. The ends of the earth by the great figures. Often it was by people from whom only a few small scraps of inf information remain that the faithful work of evangelism continued. Just as mothers daily perform work that goes unnoticed, these mothers are a reminder of the value that the small acts can have for an advance of the cause of Christ. You know, Mary, the mother of Jesus, found favor with God. And today, let me encourage you, you are found favor with God. God is on your side. And the Lord Jesus, encourages you this morning saying that he himself comes and says you are highly esteemed you found favor his kingdom shall no end here again verse 37 the verse 35 and the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon thee mary got surprised and she said how can this happen to me she had expressed a doubt and the angel replies to her and says, verse 35, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee and the power of the high, highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. And verse 37, my focus is verse 37, says, God himself says, the angel himself says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. Mary said, how can this happen? And this morning, you may be saying that how can this happen? I know you may be in a diff difficult context. Every one of us are in a different context. I'm in a small island, <laughs> you know, everywhere, war here. How can God yeah. use me in this small island? There may be so many doubts. How can I come out from this place? How can I succeed in my life? 
There may be thousand and one questions. There is no wrong in asking God. God, how can this happen? But let me tell you, God tells you this morning. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. It is impossible for you, but it's not impossible for God. For nothing will be impossible with God. Verse 37, Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Let me encourage you today. God tells, tells us in Jeremiah 32, 27. I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is, is anything too hard for me? Jeremiah thought it is difficult, but God says, is there anything too hard for me? There is nothing, my friend. There is nothing impossible to God. Genesis 18, 14, Abraham thought, is it possible for me to have a child at this old age? He thought it is impossible. God tells him, is any, I'm reading Genesis 18, 14, is anything too difficult or too wonderful for the Lord? God asked a question to Jeremiah. At the appointed time, when the season for her delivery comes, I will return to you and Sarah will have a son. My friend, today you may be thinking it is too difficult for me. Yes, it is difficult for you, but it is not difficult for God to answer your prayers. I don't know why, why are you praying today. The Lord will answer your prayer. And again, uh, Jeremiah um, 32, verse 17. Ah, oh, Lord God. Jeremiah himself says, Behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. There is nothing too difficult or uh, too wonderful for you. Can you say this this morning saying that? There is nothing too difficult or too wonderful for you. Yes, there is nothing difficult for God. And Luke 18, 27, Jesus himself says, but he said, the things that are impossible with people are possible with God. It is impossible for you, but not for God. And let me remind you, there is nothing impossible in the economy of God. The Lord bless you and encourage you. Let me pray before I conclude. I don't know for what you're praying. You may be thinking it is impossible. It is difficult, but let me encourage you. It is possible by God. Father in heaven, I thank you today. Pray for my viewers. Encourage, motivate. As you have assured that there is nothing impossible in your side. I don't know what my friends are waiting and praying and expecting. I pray that the power of God be designed in a special way. Use them as a powerful vessels for your kingdom. Let the impossible things may become possible for the kingdom's sake. Father, I thank you with all the authority from heaven in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray that your blessings may come in a special way so that my viewers may become a great instruments for the kingdom of God. Answer their prayers and encourage them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wonderful to see you today and we'll meet you again tomorrow. God bless you. And have a blessed day.